Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we've got Invest 95L growing in the Caribbean, bringing major flooding and mudslides going into next week. So let's take a look at the overall satellite picture this morning, and we can find ourselves with the area of convection out here into portions of the Lesser Antilles. That is bringing some heavier rains for them, for them. But this is the area of concern that we're going to be highlighting in the coming days that's going to move into portions of the Eastern Caribbean, eventually get into the Western Caribbean, which I'm very concerned with a very heavy rainfall setup. Closer into home, into the United States this afternoon, we find ourselves with our system over Oklahoma and Texas bringing all that rain we've been talking about for the last couple of days. And it's a chilly rain, and that will extend in the, in the next day or so into portions of Louisiana, into Arkansas, back into Mississippi and Alabama, eventually heading into Georgia with this whole area picking up some healthy rainfall totals. We have some lighter showers this morning and around the Mid-Atlantic, but the atmospheric river continues to be alive and well for the Pacific Northwest. But our main concern down here is going to be this tropical type system, because right now the National Hurricane Center does have a 70% chance of this developing. It's going to be going over the environmental conditions, our forecast to be conducive for gradual development over the next few days. And we could be looking at a tropical depression is likely to form sometime this weekend because right now there is a 70 percent probability that this forms into a tropical system and if it does it will actually take the name of lisa in the coming days so this is the area that we're going to focus on and it's all kind of stems of down here into south america of all places so if we take a look further south into south south america this is what's going to kick off of what's to come i think it's going to be above average november for tropical type development is this area down here into south america where the temperatures drop greatly drop that's all complements of this kelvin wave that's going to be kicking off a lot of area of of a kind of bubble up convection over the over the next uh, two weeks. So if we expand the view and look at the world view, you can actually see down here into South America, all this green shaded area, basically a Kelvin wave is kind of a, a fancy term for just upward rising motion air. You gotta have upward lift to increase thunderstorm development. And when that happens, you've got all this heavier rains are gonna be setting up over portions of South America back, back into the Atlantic sneaking into the Caribbean with all that upward rising motion air over the first 10 days of November. So if we take a look at the JMA, because the JMA is on board as well. So we got the EPS guidance having in that vertical velocity index showing that all that upward rising motion air, but we also have the JMA, which is your Japanese model. So typically when those two, those two guidances are, are synced, that's a very high probability this is going to come to fruition. So over the next three to nine days from October the 26th, you can see all the areas in blue here out here into portions of South America into the Atlantic heading towards the Caribbean with all that upward rising motion air just getting a little bit closer. So by the time we get into that first week of November, that first 10 days of November, we've got a lot of darker blues setting up highlighting what that EPS guidance as well. So that's a pretty good high probability of we got a lot of thunderstorm activity is going to be bubbling up in that area. And the more thunderstorm activity you have in such a small area, the greater the chances things start to congeal together and they start to rotate, get a low level surface. And that's when you have a tropical storm type entity starting to develop. So if we take a look at the overall hazard out index, the, uh, from the Climate Prediction Center, it's highlighting that area from this November the 2nd through the 8th time frame. This area in red complements of that upward rising motion air that's going to be extending into a good chunk of the Caribbean. So this is my concern, especially as we get into those first couple of days of November. We could be looking at a tropical type system in our hands and there's a lot of indications. It's gonna be looking at low steering currents. You could be sitting over the Caribbean for an extended period of time, dumping some very, very heavy rainfall. So there's two things working for this system. So. Right now, this is late October, heading into November. We're al almost on the verge of getting out of hurricane season, but we still have 9% left. And this typically this time of year, 
not only do we have very warm waters at the surface in the Caribbean, well above average to, you know, to, to uh, form tropical type development, but we also have deep ocean content as well. So once you go down about a half a mile down into the lower levels of the ocean, we got a lot of uh, elevated sea surface, uh, elevated temperatures down there as well. So as these systems kind of sit and spin over the same area, it's able to pull more moisture up to the surface and cause that upward rising motion air with, and then just able to really extend and you know highlight that area a very high probability of tropical type development. If we take a look at the overall EPS probability guidance, it, it is in basically implying the same thing. So by the time we get to the, the first and the third on the ensemble guidance, it's highlighting this area of concern that shifts a little bit further north and gets tugged west. It fills this ridge up into the US. So it's gonna be locked into low steering currents. And so yes, by the time we get through the first, say Tuesday of next week into Wednesday, we could be looking at some heavier rains really setting up over portions of Jamaica, getting into the Cayman Islands by then. So let's take it to the United States because here, going into next week, we've been talking about highlighting the negative WPO that's gonna be bringing this trough into the Western regions. We still have the, uh, the ridge is gonna be highlighting over our Eastern two thirds of the US. So as this system starts to uh, develop, it's gonna be feeling the effects of this ridge. So this is gonna help amplify and help lower the pressures, you get higher pressures to the north, lower pressures underneath. So this is gonna actually help enhance and help form this system down here into the Caribbean. But it's also gonna have steering currents with it shifting a little bit further off to the west, but also act, acting like as a blocking mechanism. And that's what's gonna keep these systems down here into the Caribbean. So I'm not really concerned into the United States with this system. I'm more concerned for the Caribbean just being a very heavy rain mark maker into next week. So if we take a look at some of the ensemble guidance that just literally came out, because they just labeled this Invest 95L, we find ourselves with the newest uh, European ensemble guidance has this shifting westbound. It feels the effects of that ridge right to the north up into the United States. This shifts it further west, but you can look at the time frame on this. It doesn't really go anywhere that fast, right? This is a three day time span, 120 20 hour time span, 144 hour time span. So it takes a long time just to shift across the Caribbean. And that's just the European guidance, uh, the GFS guidance. Not only does it have it shifting west, but it feels that effects and has very low steering currents. It almost makes a loop. So obviously if that would something like that would happen, that would just aid into that tropical type entity to sitting over the same areas for days and days and days and raining. It could be a prolific rainfall maker for these for these areas in the Caribbean, eventually causing major flooding and mudslides for the region. So if we take a look at all the models that literally just kind of came out, so this is kind of a fresh look at some of the data, the newest data that just came out. It's got very low steering currents, right? It's just kind of all over the place, but predominantly it's in this same area into the Eastern and Western Caribbean for at least a week if not more. So here's some of the intensity guidance from this particular system. Most of the guidance, by the time we get into say day three, day four timeframe, going into this weekend, possibly early next week, say Monday or Tuesday, yes, we could be looking at our tropical type system on our hands. And if it does, it would be the taking the name of Lisa, but with this system, it doesn't matter if it forms or not into a tropical entity. It's going to be sitting there. It's got a lot of upward rising motion air, and those thunderstorms are going to be sitting over those areas. It's going to be this could be a little, very prolific rainfall maker for these areas. If we look at some of the steering currents on where storms typically go in November, you can find yourself right here into portions of the eastern and western Caribbean by Jamaica, by the Cayman Islands. Typically, like I mentioned, this is about 9% left in hurricane season. Typically, we get about one name storm in November. But this season, I'm thinking since it started late, remember, we only had three name storms at the end of August. We could be looking at above average November. So we got 11 storms. We could probably easily tack on a couple of more to get, just get to an average system, average uh, year in tropical development. But yeah, this is the area of concern. I'm definitely 
keeping my eye on in the Caribbean. So if we walk you through some of the ensemble guidance, this is my concern because by the time we get into Halloween timeframe, right? So right now it's got a 70% chance of development. It's got a lot of ensemble members just slowly drifting, right? Slowly drifting essentially right there in and around Jamaica. There's the Dominican Republic. So this whole area could be looking at some very heavy rain by the time we get into your Monday Halloween timeframe. And there's the system with all that uh, upward rising motion air, the, uh, the, the, the very heavy rain amounts could be looking at one to two inches of rain going to be impacting these areas. And we got more trailing behind it in and around the Puerto Rico area. If we extend all the way through Friday of next week around the 4th, it's got more and more ensemble members right in the same area by the Cayman Islands, by Jamaica, by the Dominican Republic, these areas in Central America. This whole area could be looking at some very heavy rainfall. That's on Friday extending all the way until next weekend so you can see this whole area just kind of drifts and sits and spins and then really dumpings heavy rainfall day after day after day so it's going to be a compounding effect all next week i feel over time this could be causing some major flooding uh just what that area of development in the same areas for an extended period of time so if we add all this up for the next uh, 10 days, some of this area is definitely concerning into Puerto Rico, into the Dominican Republic, especially in and around the Jamaica area, portions of the Cayman Islands, this whole area into the Eastern and Western Caribbean is very heavy rainfall set up. And you already get typically some heavier rains this time of year because it's the last month where you have tropical type development. But this could be like five times typically more than average. So that's an ex that's an excessive amount of rainfall you're looking uh, over the same areas for an extended period of time. And even beyond that, I mean, the European ensembles are kind of hinting at the same thing. Even by the time we get into the 10th of November, yeah, all these areas in Jamaica got back into the Puerto Rico area, Dominican Republic, getting into portions of, portions of the Bahamas, say the Turks and Caicos has lowering pressure still. So this whole area, at least probably for the first five, 10, 15 days of November, definitely has a lot of low pressures. And as the low, low pressures keep over those same areas, it remains unsettled and it remains wet, <laughs> extremely wet in those areas. We take a look at just some of the rainfall totals, they could be really adding up in a big way, causing extensive flooding over a period of time highlighted on numerous ensemble member guidance from the Canadian to the European all the way up to the GFS picking up some probably upwards to almost double digit rainfalls over extended period of time causing some of that major flooding and mudslides so if you live in and around if you're vacationing down here into the Caribbean for the first half of November be on high alert because it looks very extremely wet and i'm definitely concerned of the major flooding that could take place over the next two weeks and some of the mudslides that might come out of this area uh for the first two weeks of november so hey i appreciate you guys uh watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm